I already spoke about how much I love Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars earlier this year in my top 10 Nintendo games video, but I'm gonna have a lot more to say about it now because I was not expecting Nintendo to drop the bombshell on us that they did a couple weeks ago in their Nintendo Direct. The fan favorite game that's been ignored by Nintendo for over 25 years and seemed like it was going to be locked away in Square Enix prison until it died is finally making a comeback with a remake on the Nintendo Switch. While this news is extremely exciting for someone like me who absolutely loves Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, I do want to start by saying that I am personally not a very big remake guy in the world of games or really actually in the world of media as a whole. It seems all we make these days are remakes and reboots of old pieces of media, and it really seems like in the gamer world, so many gamers just want remakes. Every time the Game Awards comes along, or when E3 used to actually exist, everybody I knew was just flipping out like, oh, I can't wait for them to remake this game, I can't wait for a remaster of this, I can't wait for a new version of this game from my childhood. I want to play every game I grew up with again with modern graphics and modern controls. And to me, I always thought, I want new things. I want new games, new experiences, new franchises, new continuations of old franchises. I've already played those old games. They're not going anywhere. They're always going to be here. So I always feel I'd rather have something new than the same old stuff. Sure, remakes are fine, but I don't know, they don't get me too excited anymore when everything is just a remake. I think I'd prefer old games to come back as ports. If you don't feel like buying an old console or even hooking up an old console to play old games, then just download it on something like a collection like Konami or Capcom does with their old games or with Nintendo Switch Online or something like that. So my personal preference would have been to get a sequel to Super Mario RPG and get the original put on Nintendo Switch Online. And it seems when these rumors first started circulating, which was a while ago, it was about a potential sequel and I didn't really pay attention to those or believe them. It wasn't until very shortly before the Nintendo Direct, like a day or two before, that I heard about the possibility of a remake coming out via Papa Gino's, and that's when I started believing it more. But although I do think that typically a sequel would be better, and I still agree I would rather get a sequel than a remake, I do think if they just dumped this game on Nintendo Switch Online, a lot of kids wouldn't play it. A lot of younger gamers wouldn't go onto there and play it. I know a lot of younger gamers who have a Switch and they don't even go in the NES or Super NES sections of the Nintendo Switch Online. They don't play any of those games. I mean, you have like Joe and Mac 2 and all these old games like that on there that I really don't think younger gamers are going on there and experiencing. So I do think it's kind of important to make a remake of Super Mario RPG. For people my age, Super Mario RPG is a big deal. We still talk about how great this game was. Many people my age or older or younger consider this one of the best things the Super Nintendo had to offer, one of, one of the greatest moments in Mario history. And a lot of younger gamers who have never played the game probably don't get why. You kind of had to be there at the time it was released. Sure, now there's a million characters in Mario, there's a million different games, there's a million different subplots going on in the world of Mario. But back then, the Mario franchise was so much smaller. The only main characters we really had were Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, Toad, the Seven Koopalings, and very recently at that time, Yoshi and Kamek. Peach and Kamek were both in the process of being changed from Toadstool and the Magic Koopa in the West, and Toadstool hadn't even made her transition yet. Sure, there were some other characters like Daisy and Tatanga on the Game Boy, and Wario was kind of taking off shortly before that, but Super Mario RPG was really one of the first times we got not only fleshed out personalities for characters like Bowser and Peach, which before that were pretty much nothing, but also the first time we got a bunch of new characters introduced to the franchise, new, unique, interesting characters who played major roles in the story. We got so many all in one game. We got Gino, Mallow, Croco, Punchinello, just a lot of O's, I guess. 
And we got the whole Smithy gang, like Mac, Bowyer, Yaradovich, the Axum Rangers, Exor, and Smithy himself, along with a bunch of other crazy characters. At the time, this was really exciting. These characters were all so varied and wild and crazy and wacky, and their zaniness fit in with what Mario seemed like at the time. After I played this game, I kept waiting for those characters to show up in other Mario games. I didn't understand the legalities back then that Square owns all of these characters. I just thought, these are new Mario characters, when are they going to start appearing in Mario games? Not only did I want characters like Geno and Mallow to show up in Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros., I was also waiting for them to just show up in Mario platformers. When they made Mario Galaxy and didn't put Geno in, it really was a bummer. It seemed like the perfect time if you're going to make a Mario space game to bring back characters like Tatanga and Geno. But instead, they completely removed those characters, and instead we got Rosalina. And she has kind of become the main star character in the cast of Mario now instead of Gino. And honestly, I think she's so much boringer than Gino. I just feel her design looks so similar to Peach's, like her hair is just faded more and one of her clumps of bangs grew over one eye and she's wearing pajamas. Also, she's like gigantic for some reason. Like she's not tall, she's just like someone grabbed the dotted line around her and just just grow her. But, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I've grown to like Rosalina. I think she's fine. I don't love her. I hated her when I first saw her, but she's fine. I have no problem with Rosalina, but I just think Gino is such a more interesting character. I feel he has so much more personality. He's so much more unique in the way that he looks. He's got so much more unique powers and stuff. Like, Gino is just such a cool character. I love Gino being one of, like, the main Mario heroes. And I think I'm not alone on that. A lot of people who love this game love Gino. And I think Gino and Mallow just really fit in as, like, main heroes in the Mario franchise. Unfortunately, today, there's way less variety in the Mario characters. It seems like the main cast of acceptable Mario characters in this day and age is just greatly diluted into just plumber characters who are dressed like Mario, princesses who are more or less in the style of Peach, Koopa characters, which I love the Koopalings, they're my favorite Mario characters, but there's a lot of Koopa characters. Toads who just look like Toad, even ones like Toadsworth, who they were really pushing, who was really just 100% inspired by the Chancellor from Super Mario RPG. Even he's been dropped in recent years because he looks too different, and with the, you know, exception of Mario RPG coming back, they just weren't allowing Toads to have hair or accessories or anything. It was just, you were Toad, you were a different color of Toad, or you were Toadette. And the only other types of characters really are little squat dinosaurs with white bellies, like Yoshi and Birdo, who were supposed to pretend are not dinosaurs. And that's pretty much what makes up most of the roster of Mario games now. And I love those characters, but just give us the crazy uniqueness that the older games had. Gino and Mallow stand out so much, Croco stands out so much, Jonathan Jones stands out so much. These are such cool ideas for characters, and they're all just lost. As I stated in my Top 10 Nintendo Games video from earlier this year, when I was in college, I was working on a lot of Mario hack games with Lunar Magic, you know, making my own Mario adventures. And at that time, simultaneously, I was drawing, you know, fake assets and sprites and screenshots and stuff of my ideal Super Mario Brothers 4, as I was calling it, though it really should have been 5 because World is 4, but anyway. In this game, Bowser and the Kooplings were kicked out of their castle and it was overtaken by seven evil queen characters. And Mario and Luigi would slowly team up with the Kooplings, who would become playable over the course of the game, to take down these queens. And of these seven queens, six I made up myself, which were named Queen Dazzle, Gertha, Venus, Dorothy, Bamba, and Sophia, and yes, the Golden Girls reference was intentional. But one of those bosses was Queen Valentina. When I thought of evil usurper queen characters for Mario, 
Of course I was going to put Valentina in. And while she was the queen of the cloud world, I was going to make Dodo the mini boss of the fortresses in her world. It just seemed like they introduced so much potential with these unique characters in Super Mario RPG, and then they just wasted them for a lot of way more bland characters, in my opinion. But also, a lot of these characters and the assets of Super Mario RPG influenced the Mario franchise going forward so much. A lot of characters, like Popple in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, which actually started off as a potential sequel to Mario RPG, is so similar to Croco in that it's a character you keep running into over the course of the game who's not a main villain, just an obstacle you keep encountering, and having to do a boss battle with, who's a bandit who carries a giant sack of loot over his shoulder. Even Peach's abilities in Super Smash Bros. She used to use the frying pan for her forward smash sometimes, which is right from Mario RPG. Her parasol, which has become a major part of her character, is originally from Mario RPG. And even her basic jab combo is from Super Mario RPG. It's even debatable that her final smash, where she puts you to sleep, is based on Sleepy Time, one of her special attacks from Super Mario RPG. Hell, even subseries like the Mario & Luigi games and the Paper Mario games wouldn't even exist if not for Mario RPG, because making Mario RPGs probably wouldn't even be a concept they'd want to do if not for the success of Super Mario RPG. Hell, both of those games, Paper Mario and Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, as I said before, started out as sequels directly to Super Mario RPG. I remember specifically seeing a screenshot in Game Pro Magazine of Paper Mario like two years before it came out and it was called Mario RPG 2. Mario RPG had a huge influence on the Mario franchise and Nintendo doesn't really admit it because they kind of swept it under the rug, but a lot never would have happened if not for that game. Heck, even the concept of collecting seven stars in each stage of Super Mario 64 is probably inspired by Legend of the Seven Stars. That might be a stretch, but eh, I think it's possible. But the fact that these characters really brought the most amount of life to the Mario franchise in games at that time is a huge deal, I think. Before that, the only way we really got personalities for characters was the Deke cartoon, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3, or Super Mario World. And even then, they had to dig pretty deep and give personalities to bosses from Mario 2 like Mouser and Triclyde. They created some of their own, like Ubtar, who I still wish would be in the games at some point. I know that's unlikely, but I think he's such a good contrasting best friend for Yoshi, where he thinks he's really tough and brave, but anytime he's in the face of danger, he just becomes a complete wuss. Whereas Yoshi is normally afraid of everything and acts like a baby, but then when he's in danger, he just kicks the crap out of everybody. But that's a whole other story. It really was a shame for years and years after Super Mario RPG that none of this stuff was ever acknowledged again in the Mario franchise. It was bad enough that the Kooplings that I loved disappeared for like 20 years. But then add to it that everything that was made in Mario RPG was just left behind too. Mario's roster of characters just kept getting smaller and smaller and the only additions he was getting seemed like roster fillers for sports games and party games. Characters who were on the more unimaginative side, like Waluigi or Toadette. I'm not saying anything bad about those characters. I know a lot of people like them. And while I do like Waluigi's design, I do find them to be rather uninspired. Whereas if you had characters like Gino or Mallow or Croco or Frog Fuchsius or Valentina or something in these big crossover games of all these Mario characters, that would add so much varied visuals to your game. So much more personality than just a whole row of plumbers, a whole row of princesses, a whole row of baby plumbers, a whole row of baby princesses. Heck, even a lot of mainstream characters in Mario got their personalities from Super Mario RPG. Even in the Mario movie that just came out this year, the whole joke of Bowser acting like a hardened badass in front of his troops, but then having this really soft, mushy side, 
is something that originated in Super Mario RPG. He was just a guy who jumped around on a bridge and threw fireballs at you in earlier games. This was the first time he really had the personality we know now. He was a big destructive brute who, you know, kicks ass and thinks later, but deep down inside was pretty emotional and hid that from the world. And even other characters somehow indirectly inspired other Nintendo characters in my opinion. Wario was still finding his footing at this time as he was a rather new character and they didn't know what they wanted to do with him outside of just being evil Mario. And I really think a lot of his personality was taken from Booster. A lot of the expressions Booster makes and movements he does are very similar to stuff we would see Wario do in later games. Even Wario's forward tilt in Super Smash Bros. Brawl was essentially the standard attack of Booster from Mario RPG. And the fact that Booster just runs this weird place full of wacky, zany entertainment, just a tower of entertainment, is even similar to Wario's persona in the WarioWare games. I think Nintendo looked at Booster and was like, we should take what we like about this character and apply it to our own character. Also, the discussion of Super Mario RPG has never gone away. Even though I know there's a lot of younger gamers who didn't play it, who have this mindset of like, why do you people all love Gino? What the hell is so special about this guy who was in one stupid game 25 years ago? He's just some random dumb character. I think it's important for them to find out where he came from and why we like him so much. Because he's not going away. The Gino hype has never gone away. The Gino Smash Brothers push has been so real for the past 20 years. Every Nintendo gamer, regardless of age, seems to know who Gino is. I don't know if it's true, I'm just repeating what I read on the internet about a decade ago, but I heard even during the hyping of Smash Bros. Brawl, Nintendo put out a poll in Japan, and the three finalists were Sonic the Hedgehog, Mega Man, and Gino. And if that's true, obviously Sonic won the poll. But regardless of if it's true or not, there was definitely a huge push for him in the Nintendo community. Hell, even an unused music track was found in the game of Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the level you obtain Geno in in Super Mario RPG. He made a tiny little cameo in Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga in a little mini game you can play in Little Fungi Town. But for a while, that was it, and it seemed like he was done. In Super Smash Bros. 4, we got the Geno Me costume, which was a big disappointment for a lot of people who wanted him to be playable, but it was a step in the right direction. And then in Smash Ultimate, we got a spirit for Geno, we got a spirit event completely based on Super Mario RPG and World of Light, and we got a player avatar of Geno as well as eventually getting that same Gino Me costume, which disappointed harder this time. So it generally seemed like Nintendo was getting closer to doing things with those characters again. Though also, not too many years prior to that, they released Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga in a new renamed version, which took Gino's cameo out. So it was hard to say if Sakurai was just pushing to please the Geno fans he knew Smash Brothers had, or if Nintendo was genuinely answering the response of fans who were all asking for Mario RPG to return in some way or another. But aside from the virtual console all the way back on the first Wii, and maybe the Super Nintendo Classic, which very few people got a hold of, there really wasn't a way for younger generations to play Super Mario RPG and to learn about these characters and where they came from and what kind of impact they had on a generation of Nintendo fans. So in this case, I do think a remake is important. If they just made a sequel, it wouldn't really bring younger fans in. They wouldn't know what this is a sequel to. It would just confuse them and feel like an empty experience. So, in this case, I do think a remake is very important. But now that I've talked about why I think this remake is important, how about I give my thoughts on what we've seen of the remake so far. We haven't seen that much, there's only been one trailer, but that one trailer has actually shown us quite a lot of stuff. Off the bat, I will say, it looks beautiful. There's definitely something special about seeing all of these classic locations and characters and objects 
modified to fit in more with the modern Mario art style, but I also greatly appreciate that they are not changing the character designs of these classic characters much. We're getting some good improvements, like Gino actually having a wooden texture to him, but for the most part, characters look like how they always looked. They're just plus versions, which actually gets me kind of excited because there's certain enemies like Remocon and stuff that I never knew what the hell I was looking at and had to just make it up in my mind. And I'm pretty excited to see what they're actually meant to look like. They very easily could have just completely redesigned every character. And there are little changes. Like I noticed for some reason, Boshi and Krako no longer wear their toeless shoes that I always found to be like the wraps that Master Splinter or Scrooge McDuck wore around their feet. They just have these little weird red rings like ankle bracelets now, which I don't get what that is. But for the most part, the characters really look the same. Characters like Yaradovich look so cool. And we saw a lot of moments from the game in the trailer. It was cool to see Mega Smilax and Birdo, but to be honest, I wasn't as excited for shots like that because they didn't show off anything not currently in the Mario franchise. I mostly wanted to see all the original characters and places and content from Super Mario RPG appear in the trailer. But we got plenty of that. Again, we got Yarodovich, we got Bowyer, we got Dodo and Valentina, we got Booster, we got Knife Guy and Great Guy, we got Croco. We saw a lot of stuff from Super Mario RPG in this trailer. I will say, I think it is 100% intentional that Nintendo showed not only the battle between Valentina in the trailer, but also her getting attacked just to show that they removed the boob jiggle. I guess that's supposed to be like, don't worry people who played this game, when your kids play it, they don't have to see the evil boobs jiggle. But you know, I have a little bit of issue with that. When I was in middle school and I played this game, Valentina was one of my favorite snobby dommy queens. So, you know, she gave me some very enjoyable moments at that age. So I say, let those boobs jiggle, damn it. But the surprising thing is they took away the boob jiggle, which surprisingly they still kept her as insanely shapely as she was before, which surprises me. But the really surprising thing is she's still holding alcohol. While she used to be holding a martini, she seems to be holding a margarita now which apparently her Japanese name always was Margarita, so I guess that makes more sense. That's a good improvement. It's just shocking to see a Margarita appear in a Mario game. We got stages in Mario Kart made out of cake. We've got stages made out of ice cream. We didn't get a stage made out of alcohol, but I don't notice many other major changes in the footage that they showed in the trailer. There's a lot of things that are finally clear to see. There's so many little Easter eggs in Booster's toy box I never knew were there, like Diskin and F-Type, even though he's oddly colored. But I didn't notice anything too, too different, except for the obvious thing that there's a lot of cinematics now. I'm not sure, but I'm believing that maybe anytime it's just a simple dialogue scene, it will be done in the cinematic style, which also makes me wonder if there's going to be full-blown voice acting in the game. Mario doesn't talk in the game, he never did, so they wouldn't have to worry about breaking their rule of Mario not saying complete sentences in Mario games. But there could be voice acting, for all we know. Even if there's not, there's definitely going to be some cinematics at some points in the game. I think honestly doing that for most dialogue heavy scenes would be pretty good as to break up the monotony of the game, make it a little flashier and worthy of being a remake. I don't think there's much of a reason to remake a classic game if you're going to make it too much like the original. So I'm all down for the cinematics. I think that could be a ton of fun if they do that and it would really make it feel like a new fresh experience. There's certain references I don't know if they're going to be in. I don't know if the Toad is going to say that he left his bazooka at home. I don't know if Mallow's going to mention Bruce Lee. But I am very excited to see what's in and what's not in. I think the biggest if factor of this game is, is Culex going to be in? So anyone who's a big fan of Super Mario RPG knows Culex the super secret boss battle in the game that gets you the rare item, the Quartz Charm. He's designed to be the most difficult 
battle in the entire game. It's the biggest challenge, and really one of the only battles in the game that will challenge you if you're a seasoned player. Mario RPG is definitely too easy, and we'll talk about that in a second. But Qx, while he wasn't actually a Final Fantasy character, he was meant to be a generic representation of Final Fantasy bosses. And a lot of the music it plays is inspired by Final Fantasy or taken directly from Final Fantasy when you fight him and defeat him and all. So I don't know if this will be there. Again, having him in is not technically a Final Fantasy cameo. They might have to change some of the music, but I don't know if they will. His art style greatly clashed with the rest of the game because he was meant to look like a Final Fantasy 3 or 6 or whatever boss. So I don't know if Nintendo will want that in the game. But also, taking him out would really disappoint a lot of longtime fans because he was such a noteworthy part of the game. So, I don't know if they're just going to replace him with a new hard battle that's more in line with the world of Mario, but I imagine it shouldn't be that weird just on the basis of it being jarring visually since Mario Odyssey prided itself on clashing realistic serious graphics with Mario graphics. We'll really just have to wait and see on that one. But as I said, I wanted to get back to something. There have been some big changes to the battling, and I don't know if I like this. So Mario RPG was built around time ticks. If you want to hear me talk more about that, go watch the segment on Mario RPG in my top 10 Nintendo games video from earlier this year that I've referenced 5 billion times already in this video. But the thing about time ticks is every attack that you can block and every attack you can do to enemies has a specific button input timing where if you press the button at a certain time during the attack, you can either add to your attack with more damage and more consecutive hits, or you can block enemies' damage. Now, apparently, there's a gauge on the screen that tells you exactly when to press the button. And the better you get at pressing the button, the more it starts to go away until it's gone. But I feel like that's just holding your hand way too much. Part of the fun and challenge of boss battles and enemy encounters in Mario RPG is learning the timing to block each attack and all of that. If you just tell them exactly how to do it, it really makes it where you don't even really need to take that much damage ever again for the whole game. Yeah, just because they're telling you the timing doesn't mean everyone will be able to do the timing perfectly, but still, it leads to a situation where you really are not going to be taking damage that much in this game. A lot of people probably didn't even know you could block moves like Jinxed or Silver Bullet, but now that they're going to tell you you can, it defeats a lot of the challenge of those moves. I'm guessing this will also greatly help with getting the Super Suit or the Super Jumper, which is a way better name. So I'm afraid they might make some things too easy in a game that is already too easy. In all honesty, I'm kind of hoping they make it a little more challenging, if anything, because the game is very, very easy. It is a perfect baby's first RPG, and it was my first RPG. I'd honestly be cool with them adding some more content to the game as well. I don't need it to be like massive, and I don't need them to do so much that it changes the game, but maybe some post-game content. At first I was thinking I was a little opposed to it, but if they add like a playable character after you beat the game, like Luigi, who according to this one screenshot of like Mario and Luigi at this long dining table with Valentina at the head of it, kind of implies he was going to be playable in the adventure at one point, so it might be interesting to put him back in and see what they were going to do with him, although I do think he is kind of a boring addition since we already have Mario and he probably won't do anything that different, which is probably why he was cut in the first place. I think the Mario RPG team is already pretty well made, like you have Bowser who's the super brute, you have Mallow who's the black mage, you have Mario who's the well-rounded one, you have Peach who's the most broken healer in the world. And you have Gino, who's just amazing at everything. So you don't really need too many other characters. Maybe if they added Luigi, he could be like the speed guy, but I don't know. It's, uh, 
it's still welcome to have more content, but mostly I would want more content if it means we get a little more content with the Mario RPG original characters. Maybe some of those plots that happen later on in the game, like the wedding of Booster and Valentina, or Krako and Boshi becoming friends, or whatever we see on the ending. Maybe we could explore some of those, and you can add some little bonus adventures with some of those things. Even just like if you revisit Jonathan Jones in the sea, you could go on like a little adventure with him or something as he's now your ally. I just feel like there's a lot of extra stuff you can do. And honestly, if they do things like that, that would give me hope that they are going to do more with these characters. I've heard that this remake is being developed completely in-house without Square, and Square's name in the credits was just a thanks for creating the original IP. Which makes me wonder, did Nintendo finally buy these characters back from Square? Did they finally buy the rights to Mario RPG and they own it now? I really hope so, because Square is never going to do anything with this, so I really don't know why Nintendo doesn't just throw some money Square's way and then have characters that fans have wanted to see for 25 years back in games again. Honestly, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I remember telling some friends the night before Mario RPG got shown off that I heard it might get shown off from a reliable source, and I was saying, honestly, my dream? is that they not only announce that, but then when they show off the Mario Kart 8 DLC that's coming, they add Gino and Mallow as playable characters, and maybe even a Mario RPG course somewhat like the Yoshi's Island course that we got. Obviously, yes, I want Gino and Smash eventually too, but I think Smash Ultimate is a done deal at this point. It is very safe to say that. But I would just love so much for these characters to finally make their way back into the Mario series proper. I would love to see them show up in Mario Kart games and Mario sports games and Mario Party and even Mario platformer games. I mean, we're getting Mario Wonder where they're putting in a bunch of different playable characters. How freaking cool would it be to have Mallow in that game? So yes, I am very, very happy, very excited for this remake. It's crazy. It's still unbelievable. I can still kind of not believe that this is actually happening because this is such a big game for me personally. It just reminds me of summers when I was in middle school. It's scorching hot outside, the AC's pumping, and me and my brother are in the rec room just playing this game and acting out fake battles from the game and everything. And it's just such a big part of the Mario franchise for me personally. And it's amazing to see it come back. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time, just behind Chrono Cross. I'm so excited for this to come back, and I really just hope this means that Nintendo is finally going to incorporate these characters and this world back into the canon Mario universe. And honestly, I hope that means they're gonna bring back some other ones, because while Super Mario RPG was the forgotten world of characters from my childhood, I love the characters from the Mario and Luigi games, and I don't want to see characters like Fawful and Cacletta and Princess Shrew just become nothing and just fade away into obscurity. And every now and then someone might be like, hey, did you know there was this weird Mario game where there was a bunch of bean people? I think we should hold on to all these classic characters, and this is a good step in the right direction. This is what Nintendo should do. Look at all the beloved parts of the Mario franchise and bring them back. People want to see Fawful come back. People want to see Vivian come back. And people want to see Gino come back. So this is a huge deal. I love it. I love everything about it. And I am so hyped for it. And I will definitely do a video reviewing the remake when it comes out. Even though the game is meant to be played this time of year and it's coming out in November. Because for me, it was always a summer game, so that's a little bit of an issue, but I will still play it, and I am so, so excited for it. Do all the liking and subscribing and the sharing and the bell stuff. <laughs>